Welcome to True Talk, the 102nd, 102nd episode, and I remembered to turn on my mic, which is good, and I also remembered to change the title, which is the truth, but the problem was is that for some reason it wouldn't load, because we all know that the title was being, uh, uh, the, the title change required a load of the screen, but the screen wouldn't load because I had to punch in the hardwired internet to get proper internet so that we didn't lose. So I went to the title screen, went to type it in, and then thought that I had changed it, and then realized that I actually didn't go back to it when I solved the internet issue. But we got hardwired internet, it's the 102nd episode, the crowd is starting to arrive, and Josh, we can blame Josh for this amazing little screen I've got going on here. Josh built me a screen. Hey! And so now you get to see this cool True Talk screen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess with it a little bit here. I'm gonna do this. There we go. It looks good. All right? And we just kind of like, oh, what did I do there? There we go. Ah, where did I put the screen? There it is. It's gonna like do. Oh, I see what's happening. It won't. It won't actually. Oh, okay. Well, the one way to do it then would be to physically move it up. There. So I physically move it up, and then extend it down. Oh, look at that. That's what we're talking about, folks. That is the level of awesome. Oops, I wrecked it. There we go. What do you think? That's pretty good, eh? You can probably even just do it like this. Just so you guys see all the cool information, but not all the information. And then just do this. There. There we go. There. Piped in there. There, and I can, now we can see what people are saying. Hey, so, how's it going? Who do we got here today? Gamer and Dosu Damien, Rocketeer, Milestead, MJ Sund, Gamer B again. Previously, Tim Carter is here. Jared Mitz. Delay of Games. And Six Sides, that's me. So, uh, welcome, welcome all. It's good to see the family together again for yet another episode of True Talk. This is the 102nd episode, and so much stuff to talk about, yet nothing to talk about all at the same time. I mean, every week, there's always something crazy. Yes, I'm using OBS. Uh, there's always something crazy to, uh, to talk about, but, I mean, it requires you guys to ask me the questions to get it started, which is why I put the chat in. I've been watching some other Twitch streamers and stuff like that who engage their audience, I'm blown back by how many of them don't actually post the, uh, the, the, the chat. They don't show the chat. So I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. Cause then, uh, but yet they answer people's questions in the chat. So it's, more, so it's like, they'll say something like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm using OBS. Thanks just for asking. But, you, you know, we'd be happy to see. But, ah, we have a gifted sub to Dosi Damien from Gamer Be Happy. So now that you've done that, you've actually triggered something that I wanted to talk about for, for, for Dungeon of the Mad Mage and for all of our RPG games going forward to make you wish you had given it later. Um, that gift of the sub. So what we're going to do... Make sure here. There we go. Ah, I see. Okay. There we go. That makes more sense. So what we're going to do on D&D is we've decided that right now the subs, the, the gifted subs and stuff that you get, or the subs that people subscribe on, they turn the puns on and off, which is exciting, but it's not really that exciting. And we've also found out that when you gift a sub to somebody, like Gamer B just did because she's amazing and she likes to support the channel this way, but when you gift a sub to somebody, it gets them more engaged. It brings them back. They feel, they, they feel like the community appreciates them being there. We also realize that there's a direct correlation between gifting subs and the people who are subscribed and return audience. As you've noticed, over the last little while, the audience has grown. It gets bigger and bigger. And the reason why that is is because our discoverability is there, but our, our retention is super high. This uh, True Talk's retention is higher than normal. Or sorry, not True Talk. The entire Six Sides of Gaming's retention is a little higher than normal because costumes and programming and everything is all like, it's quite, it's quite like engaging enough for people to stick around at least that's what we're hoping is the reason why it's retaining i can't think of any other reason why we're retaining so many people um 
Anyway, so, oh my God, I shouldn't have messed with it. It was perfectly fine, and then I wrecked it. Okay, so um, it's higher than normal, which is good. Uh, but we noticed that the more people are subscribing or being gifted subs, as you can see on the top there with, you know, Vader Dojo and Victor and TK's obscene amount of, of uh, subscribing, um, which is amazing and I appreciate it, but it's, it's part of what keeps the channel alive. Those subscriptions to other people bring them in and keep them engaged. So we're like, well, we want to kind of incentivize this. If people are going to be gifting the subs they are, we want it to have more fun. So here's what we're going to do. <laughs> when a sub is gifted or a resub is made, any sub that is made during the, uh, the, the D&D games, um, and I've decided that today we're going to do the same thing, a any of True Talk's uh, subbing will count. You have a choice. So we are going to put a D8 into a bowl. But you choose the Dungeon Master's Bowl or the Player's Bowl. That chalice or bowl, the D8 goes in for every sub that is gifted or subbed. If you resubscribe or you gift a sub or whatever you sub, if you eat a sub, no, if you don't eat a sub, then, you, uh, then we put the die in the bowl. And you tell us where you want to put it. So in this case, let's start off with this. So B, you just gifted a sub to Dosa Damien. So you have a D8 that you can give to the players or the GM, and you can choose which game you want to give it to, unless you're subbing during the game. So tonight, during Dungeon of the Mad Mage, if you sub, then you choose where if you're giving it to the GM or the players, and that D8 goes in a bowl. Now, what can the D8s be used for? Well, that's a really good question, people. I'm glad you didn't ask, but I figured it out. It doesn't go to a specific person. It's not going to a specific person, so you can't just give it to Chronostatic, although Chronostatic could use it. And uh, uh, the D8s are going to be D6s for Shadowrun. So here's how it works. Here's how it works. Um, in the bowl, if there's like 50 D8s, or 5 D8s, or 1 D8, any of the players can work to... So if it's in the player's bowl, the players can say, hey, I want to use the D8 for healing or for damage augmenting. And you use it to enhance a regularly enhanced action. So for example, I'm about to die in the game, and uh, let's say it's true, I say it's a uh, deadliest dungeon. Um, my character is gonna pass away in the game, let's say, the key master, and uh, G Gambit decides to heal, and he casts Secure Light Wounds. He gets, the Cure Light Wounds is one D8. He decides to augment it by grabbing D8s from the bowl and can roll those D8s to add to the healing. Not bad, eh? And then in, in for D&D, you can also give it to the GM. So if the GM has like 10 D8 in his pool, because TK decided to give 10 subs, and there's 10 D8 in the pool, he can grab any and all of those D8s and augment an attack, which means if he really wants to kill the Key Master, he could hit the Key Master, use an auto crit that... Um, that uh, an auto crit that uh, uh, spec bottom, and then use all 10 D8 the TK bottom, and then maximize the damage with the inspiration the Darian bottom to literally just kill the character. How badass is that? Uh, now the opposite opposite side of the coin is we could have 10 D8 in our pool, and you know I could cast a fireball. Let's say I cast a fireball, and I want to like, and I'm already using like uh, six D8 in damage or 66 damage, or 86 damage, now I want to add 10 D8 to it and make it a really powerful fireball. So you want to give it to the players in Shadowrun? Okay, so the players in Shadowrun now have one extra D6. If you're there tonight, and I forget to tell them, which I don't think I will because I, we need that extra six, um, we'll put it in the Shadowrun cup. And I think for, for the sake of funniness, it will be the grenade, the purple grenade that unscrews. We'll put D6s in there, and for every D6 that's in there is, a, is something that the players can use throughout the game. So if you gift subs, and if you res when you resubscribe, and if you gift subs, every single sub you give and every single uh, resub you do will add a D6 to Shadowrun or a D8 to any D&D game, and you choose the game, and then you choose whether it's GM or player side. Just something more exciting to do. I mean... I, I wish I'd thought of this on the tr on two true talks ago when TK dropped like a thousand subscriptions. Uh, it also still turns on puns or not, and it turns puns on and off. 
But now if you try to turn the pun on or turn the pun off by subscribing to people or if you gift subs to people to keep them in, you're not just gifting the sub because we appreciate that, but we want you to have more fun with the gifted sub. So now when you gift the sub, we've got cool economy that we can do with it. Tell me what you guys think of that. Do you think it's, think it's great? I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's a really good and engaging way for people who are gifting subs, such as how wonderful Gamer B is by just gifting a sub to Dose Damien, gives us a chance. Uh, yeah, well, the puns on off are still there, but it's not just puns on off, right? Because I was thinking about it, I'm like, this puns on off stuff is, puns is a very big thing. It's a really big aspect of our channel. But, I mean, to gift a sub is way more expensive than 100 bits for inspiration. You get way more value with the inspiration. Now, we don't get that much uh, in terms of, like, the channel. Like, Six Size doesn't gain too much financial from the subscription. I think we get, like, a third or a half of the subscription. The rest goes to Twitch, um, which is the way it always is. But you get all these perks for subbing and yada, yada, yada. But you get like advertisement free and, and things like that when you come to watch the channel. And that, and that helps things out for, for the low price of like six bucks Canadian, I think, um, a month to subscribe and, and support the channel. So um, subscribing now at this point, um, what it does is, I mean, the bits give us 100%. So if you dump 100 bits to give an inspiration, the channel gets 100% of that. Um, if you dump uh, a sub, we only get half of that but the subscriptions are very important don't get me wrong there's a there, in order to grow this community even bigger beyond it's beyond the conventions that we're doing in the and the youtube promotions and anything that we're doing at this point subscribing to the channel actually especially if you gift subs it gets other people involved and i've seen a, a high correlation of people staying in the channel because they were gifted a sub and they become their own subscribers afterward because they you know you check the channel, like, oh, what is this? I don't really know these guys. It's kind of weird. Oh, the costumes are cool, so I'll stick around. Or this weirdo with his blue shirt and his blue shirt are talking away. And then you're like, oh, well, you know, as, as Jared says, it's the smile. <laughs> no, it's the smile. Uh, and so whatever, whatever the reason why you want to stay, and then you stay to check it out. And then all of a sudden, as you're checking it out, you might chat. And if you're new to chat and you're here in the chat, say hello. And then you might want to check it out. And then you just kind of talk about it. And then you, you make a comment or you say something. You're kind of new to the situation. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, GamerB give, gifts you a sub. And says, welcome to the community. Wow. Okay. That's, that's the community we want. So it works out. And so that wonderful gift that B gave keeps the person around. And then if it's, when it comes time to resubscribe that, they're like, you know what? I really... I really like this channel. I like what these guys are doing. I want to see this grow and continue. So therefore, I'm going to resubscribe. Do that a couple hundred times. Boom. It's great. Suddenly, you've got a model that works. And when that works, you guys are literally building entertainment. And then it gets better and better and better. We can get better cameras. We can get better lighting. We get better sound. We, just, we get better table setups. The production value gets better and better. And Vittoria. So I was just going to say, I remember the very first, let me go check, check these out, these, um, dungeons, oh, wait, I don't think, it, I don't think it's, uh, let me see here. I remember way back when, when we first started streaming, I got to shoot back quite a bit here, so be patient with me, I got to go all the way back to October. I'm only in February right now. Um, our very first D&D stream that we posted is, I don't know if you, were, if you were, had a chance to see it or if you remember it, but boy, was it something else. I'm going to go right back to that, to that first thing and see if I can find it. I'm back. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's April 2020. That's way too far back. Let's see here. December 1st, 2020. So we go back to October. Here we go. Um... Empty chairs, Dungeons and Dragons Online, kind of a big deal. Roundtable series. S Call of Cthulhu beta stream by Six Sides of Gaming. Let me see if that even exists. What that looks like. Oh, there's, there's Cam on stream. That's kind of cool. Check this out. There we go. So that there 
is the uh, Call of Cthulhu beta stream. That was our beta stream. It was still pretty good. The sound was okay, but I mean, you can still see that it was very early back in the day. And you can see Devin over there, the GM. You can also see Kayla. There's Ben. Look at Benji kicking ass. All right, so let me go. And I think there was one more that we posted. I don't think I took it down, but it was the um, it was the the alpha stream. It was so bad, but we gave it everything we had. Oh no, you didn't just do that, did you? No. Okay, here we go. November, October. So that means our first stream was October twentieth, and we didn't. Oh, Legacy Mana Session 1, Season 1. What did that look like? Oh, man. I re this, this is so far back. you got to see this. There we go. This is so far back that we didn't even care about costumes other than Ben caring about costumes. Wow, Derek and Trina. That's crazy balls. That's called a that's called a uh, birthmark, but I, I appreciate you pointing it out. <laughs> uh, there we go. That is called a birthmark. <laughs> I, I hope it was worth the resistance. <laughs> so no, uh, so that there it's 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 pretty intense. I mean, um, though we didn't. I don't think I've ever posted the original stream that we did because it said April twentieth. So I don't think I ever posted the original, original stream. I think we may have taken it down because it was so bad. Believe me when I say it was so bad. So uh, give me a second here. I'm just going to, I just realized that something didn't upload right. And then we can dig into, feel free to ask me some questions if you got any. Because I would, other than what was below my eye. I'm not offended. If you feel like you've offended me, you didn't. I'm, I'm totally just trying to tease you by making you feel bad for asking a question. Which, it's not a big deal. It's great. I love it. It used to be a little freckle. I got this. Is it this side? I don't know where it is. I got this freckle when I was a kid. It's a little freckle. And it was just this tiny little freckle. I remember as a teenager being like, what is that? And it bothered me because I was like this little freckle. And then it's kind of grown into this large freckle. It's just a giant freckle under my eye. So, all right. What do we got? What are people saying in the chat sees here? Let me pull up the chat. Boom. Ah. Huh see here uh the channel gave me something to look forward to each week during the 15th month lockdown hey you know what you guys gave me something for, uh to look forward to during the lockdown it was some dark times right it was some pretty dark times oh no and there's that computer freeze again which i'll just refix super frustrating i think it's i think it's the camera i honestly think it's the camera that's, that's messed up because if it gets moved in any way it just freezes like that. I wonder if there's something, if there's a connector to it or something's wrong with it. Who knows? What would this stream be without technical difficulties though? Although, although when watching other people's technical difficult, technical shows, I did, uh, ah, it's not working again. I see. Let's see, there we go. If it freezes again, I've got a spare camera. I'll just pop it in and we're good to go. I think it's the camera. I think it's just getting old. I think the connection's not as good. The cable's messed, which sucks because it was a very expensive camera. But hey, what can you do? All right, give me some more questions, folks. Let me, uh, let me see what else is out there on the, uh, the universe. 15th month lockdown. We had that conversation. Uh, tech is fox. Yeah, the tech is fox blocking. It's exactly what's happening. Um, I didn't just noticed before in any of your true talks it's because the only time you have the camera in this close. Yeah, I'm usually like back like this. But so how's your week been? Tell me a bit more about yourselves. How's Sweden? How's Germany? How's the US? How's England? Doesn't seem like much of the Guelph crew is here, so I can't even ask you how Guelph is, even though I can tell you how Guelph is. I do like this frame. This frame is pretty cool. I like this uh, this this uh, shield right down here. This you know, chat over here, shield down there, viewership right there. <laughs> but yes, I mean to be honest. Oh, farm season. I see. So, uh, what do you harvest? What are you what are you taking care of? Oh yeah. I mean, if if I if we were to have a 
a true talk without any of these um, problems, I probably would fabricate one just to keep it tradition. Tradition. <laughs> tradition. I've had a lot of work. Been doing a lot of work lately. Florida's okay for now. Tropical storm Elsa's rolling by. I think we got a bit of that this morning. I mean, I remember waking up at like 3 o'clock in the morning because we had thunderstorms and stuff. But I can imagine you guys are having a crazy time down there. And by the way, welcome, TK. Were you, were you here, TK, when I was talking about the subscribers? About gifting subscriptions and stuff? Or did you just show up for, the, for right now and miss the greatest description of all? New York Raider fan is here. New York has been very hot and humid. With a mix of thunderstorms. Yeah, we're, we're like that right now, too. We're super hot, super humid, super humid. Like, yesterday was so bad that when you walk out, it's like one of those, those weathers that you walk out and your shirt just, like, sticks to your body. Ugh. TK, in a nutshell, we've decided that every sub that you gift or make, you get to add for D&D, &D, even if you do it here, you get to add a D8, and you can choose whether it goes into the GM's pool or the player's chalice if the if the d8 and you can you and the players can use the d8 to add to damage or add to healing as many as they want to use whenever they want to use it so if there's 20 d8 saved up in the pool and they want to one shot a creature or a boss i could go in sneak attack grab all the d8s roll them all if the part if everyone agrees and boom roll them all if the gm wants to do it if kyle wants to it gets like 30 subs and gets 30 d8 and you give it to kyle on deadliest dungeon he could take all 30 D8 and just one-shot a character by adding all that to the damage. So it's a great way for subscriptions to come in because we notice that people are gifting subs no matter what, and we're getting subs no matter what, and this is a great way to augment the game. We've been talking a lot about, and this is for everybody now that we've kind of caught you up, we've been talking a lot about um, just how out of control these games get and how they're not really D&D &D anymore. It's D&D, &D, but it's not. It's more like D&D &D voted by the audience. It's like a choose your... The audience is making kind of a choose your own adventure augment to the way this goes. And it's fun. Like, I, it's, it, I, don't, I never know what's going to happen in a game. The GM sometimes seeds some things by saying, listen, if you go here, it's going to be a long, drawn-out battle. If you go here, you know, it could be this, but, you know, don't worry if you, this happens to your thing. And, and just, like, small little seeds so that the players aren't totally caught by surprise, so it's not just a mechanic fest. But, except for Deadliest Dungeon. Nobody knows anything about Deadliest Dungeon because it's supposed to be a mechanic fest. But all these, like, RPG games are getting so epic because it's not just like, oh, I want to, uh, oh, oh, roll for initiative – you know, make your regular attack rolls. Sometimes you succeed, sometimes you don't. We almost always succeed because of the rerolls. You guys are like, we, we almost are just like auto-attacking at this point. Um, sometimes we miss. And then it's just like, we, we tend to use these, these uh, inspirations in wild ways to augment the way the story flows. And you guys dictate that. We don't. We're like your puppets. We're like conduits to tell the story. And you, almost like we are... Uh, what do you call it? Like improvers on stage. Everyone's like, give us a cue. And then the audience gives the cue and then we make the show happen. You're literally letting us do this. And I don't, you know, I see a lot of other D&D channels and stuff and nobody does it like this. Nobody, nobody really gets the audience engaged. And I think that's why we have a lot of retention. It's because people really find it exciting and fun. You get to vote on things. Even if you don't donate anything to the channel, which is totally fine too, you still get to participate by making comments, giving ideas, voting on legendary actions versus targeted attacks, reinforcements, cursed items, things that change the game. So by adding the subscription thing in here now, and the subscriptions do puns on, puns off, which we've seen aren't super detrimental to either way, if I make a pun and I decide to take a D4 of psychic damage, it's like, woohoo, it's not really detrimental. The old version where we used to give inspiration to the other side of the pool, that's, that was pretty rough. Uh, but we made it psychic damage instead, which in Deadliest Dungeon is actually quite substantial. Um, but then in, in the other programs, we're like, well, you know what? We get all kinds of gifted subs. Plus, a lot of you resub every month. So let's give them more than just some emoticons or some titles or some gift bags, whatever the hell comes up there. Why don't we... No, because the because when you still he 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 doesn't really care anymore. He'll change it as he needs to. The pun indicator doesn't break. It's if someone gifts two subs, it won't count it as on off. It'll just whenever somebody subs, the indicator changes. So if you give ten subs, it, theoretically it should it should stay on, but it just goes to off. So it's per sub allotment, 
per sub interaction that actually kicks the pun indicator on and off. And so, yeah, so sometimes if someone gives three subs, oh, well, he should change the puns, right? Who knows? The point is, um, we're still going to do the pun indicator and we're still going to do the pun damage because the pun thing is a big part of Six Sides of Gaming. It's part of how we grow. It's part of our, our humor sake. But we wanted to do more with the subs. So now when a sub is gifted or when you resub on stream, you can select. If you're, if you're doing it during Deadliest Dungeon, you select whether it goes to Kyle or to the players, and we have these cool, we're gonna give these little cool goblets, and we're gonna put the D, we're gonna actually get a big bag of D8s and put the D8s in there. Or, or if it's Shadowrun, the D6s, this, they'll go into this, this cup. And it's a resource for the players, and it's a resource for the GM. Um, if you really want, like I said, if you really want the Keymaster to die, you'll gift a bunch of subs, you'll throw a bunch of D8s into the bin, you'll gift, uh, Kyle, legendary, um, sorry, you gift him auto crit and a bunch of inspiration to do max damage. And then Kyle hits the key master, does an auto crit with a big attack, scoops all the D8s out, rolls 10 D8. And instead of rolling it, it does the max damage thing. And the key master is dead. <laughs> that is how you kill the key master. But I mean, it's like, uh, cause there's nothing you can do about it. But on the other side of the coin, if we need to heal up and a character is about to get rocked, I, I, and I drink a potion that does 2d4 plus 4, which isn't anything in, the, in, a, in a major combat. I could reach into the cup, scoop a bunch of d8s, roll it with the 2d4, and get that many d8s worth of health back. So it, it can be going either way, right? I think it's a fun thing to do. So already we've had our first uh, sub. B gifted a sub to Dosa Damien, so she chose to put... And you can do it at any time on the channel... Uh, but if you're doing it during the particular game, you should give the dice for that game. But she chose Shadowrun for tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, the Shadowrun game, the, 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 the runners start with 1d6 in their, in their cup. So that means I'm probably going to use it. But it means, or, or if uh, um, Leroy needs to find a way to, to, to hack, he might do it. But yeah, that's it. I am giving Darian Coldstone a lot of ammunition. I really am. He, uh, he keeps telling me he plans on doing stuff, and then he doesn't. He only shows up a little bit, and, I, and he's, he keeps saying he's distracted by, like, the fact that this is his season. He's the, he's the parks. He basically runs the entire parks administration in Swift Current. So, he's, so at this time of the day and most of the time of the day, he's out, um, you know, fixing. His last Facebook post was there was this giant water main that blew up in the middle of a field, and he had to run and fix it. So at 9, 9.30 at night, he's out there trying to fix this water main thing. And I was like, well, that's, that's, uh, them's there, the, uh, the catches. But he's good. So what if we want to select turning the episode into a musical? Well, you'd have to throw a lot of money for that. <laughs> I mean, I'm more prone to start singing. It's the rest of the crew you're going to have to try and convince to get singing. And I don't think that's, that's going to happen too, too soon. Uh, we are also going to be launching a, um, a newsletter for all the subscribers. And the newsletter will have our convention schedule and a whole bunch of information on what we got coming up. And you can, you can uh, unsubscribe to the newsletter if you want, or we're going to do it like once a month and we're just going to have updates on our programming. Uh, also, I got to show you this. This, this is, pfft. I'm just going to show you this because I, I wasn't going to. That's the wrong thing. I opened up the wrong program. I wasn't going to, but... I just, I can't get over it. I can't get over it. I can't. I just, I can't. I can't. It's so good. So for those of you who are into Legacy of Mana, I've been watching the Legacy Mana stream, you will notice that uh, we've been, uh, so one of the games I played, Loholt, and my buddy Jay played Caliban. And Caliban, the fire wizard. And, uh, He's been playing D&D forever, and I've got some Legacy Amount of Books being worked on, and I've got an art, uh, um, a novel that's being worked on, and I've, been, I've hired an artist to do the next edition of the artwork, and I got some of the artwork back, and I am so blown away. I'm just going to show it here on the screen. Oh, my God. Look how good that is. That is some next-level artwork. Right? Oh, God, I wish it wasn't so blurry. But anyway, um, yes, so the reason why I'm showing this to you is because we are getting party compositions of these done. 
So you will have an artwork of this quality and caliber, and it will be, you will see Eke, you will see a Hivark, um, Foley Embeard, and Peanut will get done in this format, which will be probably the still. But look at the quality and caliber of this work. Oh my God, it's so good. I've never, I've stared, I look at it every 20 minutes. So I'm just so really, it's just so poppy. Oh, God. Wouldn't you, Matt, wouldn't you love to have a D&D book that has that kind of art in it? Well, you will. As I drop my phone. Uh, so that artwork is coming, which is really, really good. Um, and so we're going to have Ek down. We're going to have Foley. We're going to have, we're also going to do the Deadliest Dungeon crew. So you will see Keymaster. You will see Dovrik and Jaldrad. And you'll see uh, all the characters. So next week you get the chance, to, uh, we'll be doing Gabriel and Embrowry. The week after that will be Loholt and Valharis. And then we'll start getting into the actual stream characters. Ek is going to happen as well. So uh, those, those, those art pieces are so good. Um, and I'm excited for that. So, um, Oh, yeah, he'd probably just do like another Shemshine thing where he makes everyone sing. And then uh, the colors really stand out. Yes, I agree. They, are, they really sound out really well. As a giveaway, what's the uh, what's the giveaway mean? So it's a quiet day today. The uh, we got the regulars here, but we're not really explosive like we were the last two weeks. Our numbers were quite high the last couple of weeks, and today it's a quieter day. I wonder if it was uh, social media not uh, not being pr produced out there like like it has been the last little while. Um, All right, Legacy of Mana book as a giveaway, uh, maybe, maybe uh, I probably want to. I'll probably, I'll probably give copies away at some point, but uh, I'll be totally honest. The next print of the book is going to be quite expensive, so uh, I'm sure I'll be giving some away at some point. I tend to give away a lot of things, but uh, I think the giveaways are based on the sponsorship we get. We do have some stuff to give away still that some uh, board game level sponsors gave us, so we still got a lot of Japan May stuff to give away. Once we get the board game uh, running back, the board game program running up and running again, but uh, for us on our regular giveaways, oh no, it can be—it's not a joke. Uh, you, I mean, giveaways are there. People, uh, that's the whole point of the giveaways. Free stuff is good. We've got like seven things we still have to mail out. Uh, some of it's been mailed. There's still a ton of things. We don't have a system to give things away. It's easy to give things away. It's hard for us to actually take the time to go and mail them because we don't have anybody on the team to do that stuff. Um, it's just, and, and everybody is like super swamped with initiatives. So it kind of, sad to say, but the, the giveaway stuff kind of becomes like super, super, uh, what do you call it? Um, it kind of becomes super low priority and then it kind of gets lost in the mix. So we've got this table with all these labels printed out, all these boxes and stacks of board games. They were like, okay, yeah, we'll get to that tomorrow. And then we get too exhausted after a game. We're like, I need to go home. It's too hot in here. And then, well, yeah, we'll deal with it on Sunday. And then, never going to do it on Sunday. And so, and then, and then, you know, like a week later, they're all boxed up. It's like, okay, we've got to tape them together now. And then it just becomes like, Pfft. yeah, I know. I know it's free. But still, it's like they're giving, if it gets too backloggy, then it's insane. So, I think one of the things we're going to do is just, uh, I think Adrian, Adrian is the one who is the most, out of everybody on the team, on the six sides, like, like head team, Adrian is the most disciplined to be able to get things done. He's the one that is not, I, I'm not gonna say lazy. He's not lazy at all. He's like the opposite of lazy. Um, Adrian is the one that is just like, he really just gets shit done. The problem is, is I keep stacking shit on his plate that's of more importance, such as, hey, you know, we're gonna stream this Magic the Gathering stream because it's time to get it going again. So, kaboom. And then he will go and, and spend all of his energy and focus on building up that stream uh, to get the cameras up and the TVs and the cables and everything. Now he's got some crazy camera stuff coming to do some cool camera things that we're doing. And then, and then the, you know, wash, rinse, repeat uh, on how it goes. Um, and so, you know, and then on top of that, you know, it's still having to get the, the, uh, the stuff to be able to ship out. So then... With the newsletter, you mentioned have alerts for when the stream is going to happen. Yeah, we're going to put a schedule up on the newsletter. We're not going to launch a newsletter very often because we don't want to bombard people with too much information. And the newsletter is just another thing to build out in terms of social media. Six Sides is theoretically growing significantly faster than we can handle. 
um, which is a really good sign to things. And when I say grows, I mean the, the uh, offer. The offer of what we do for you, for the patrons and for the channel itself, is outgrowing the pace of which we can handle it. And the revenue is coming in to sustain that, but we, you know, we, we've got a long way to go to get it to a self-sustaining channel because it still means that Adrian has got a full-time job and it still means that I have to focus all my other energies on things like this, which is also just as much fun, but it's a diverse level of fun. There's a lot to do. And you guys are a big part of that. I'm only talking about it here because it's true talk and this is where I talk about my entrepreneurial stuff, right? So... We will get there. Mm. This is like a cool... I got this at the Middle Eastern store. It's called Sultan. Sultan Iced Tea. It is uh, ginseng and green tea. Yeah, ginseng and green tea. Yeah. Black seed. Served chilled. Ginseng, green tea, and it's uh, sweetened with honey. I feel like eating baklava. They have really good baklava over there, and I eat the shit out of that stuff. Well, if you run out of room to move, then it will be prioritized. Oh, yes, 100%. It's getting pretty close. Like, we are getting close. We are, we are looking to ship the stuff out. We, like I said, our queue is slow, but we are getting there. Um, the game reviews, we have eight episodes shot. And I believe I'm getting all that information soon. Uh, Adrian has cut them all together for me. And I think he's delivering that plus eight episodes of the Magic the Gathering stream cut into the eight hours, eight, the eight rounds. So I have uh, 16 videos <laughs> to upload to YouTube. Um, and then I'm scheduling them to come out over, over the next week or two. So you're about to be bombarded with a whole lot of stuff on YouTube to watch. And then on top of all of that, on top of all of that... We've got the website to launch, which is very, very close. And that's what Chris is doing. Chris has been working on the website. Um, he's making sure that the back end can handle all of the stuff that he's going to be doing. We've got a major advertising campaign with a lot of traffic driving. We're going to try and get a lot of eyes onto these articles. We have a full team of writers that have been writing articles nonstop, getting uh, you know 1,200 word articles, and they're just pounding out these things. Everything from like the top 10 this, the best magic cards, cool D&D character compositions, uh, Warhammer army painting techniques, all kinds of articles, and those are all going to launch. We got about fifty or sixty articles that are going to launch off at the same time, and then away we go. I think I missed when you renamed everything to Six Sides. What happened to Lynn Vander? Uh, Lynn Vander is still very much here. See, uh, wait, Lynn Vander, Lynn Vander, and Lynn Vander. So uh, yeah, no, Lynn Vander's still here. Uh, the Lynn Vander YouTube channel, there was a discussion about it. Um, I wouldn't be able to... The only thing that would be on the Lynn Vander YouTube channel would be True Talk. And so with Design Depths and uh, Game Grit, with Josh and Dylan kind of falling by the wayside for now. Not gone forever, just falling by the wayside for now. Uh, paused for a little while. Uh, it didn't make sense to have such a big audience for True Talk when it's just, a, uh, you know, it's, it's actually a concentrated 20 that tend to show up for these, these amazing meetings. Um, and having all those followers and stuff involved, watching different things that we do, uh, we, and we didn't have that many followers back then, but to try and, like, make it work out, I thought, you know, it's better to just donate the channel to Six Sides rather than compete with ourselves, rather than have a slow burn new channel that's going to have to work its way up the chain to get all of those perks that I already have for the Vander channel, consciously knowing that I'm going to be jumping ship to the other channel anyway. So it made sense to amalgamate the channel into a Six Sides channel. There's a lot, there was a lot of conflict to go with that, but we, we figured through it all, um, and now it became a Six Sides channel. Essentially, Lynn, it makes more sense for, and it's funny because the Six Sides hat and the Lynn Vander hat are completely different hats. Like, they're different companies, different partners, different partner bases. You know, Josh and Dylan are part of Team Lynn Vander. Adrian and Chris are part of Six Sides. The glue that holds it all together is this guy right here. I'm the guy that kind of marries these initiatives together. But they don't, they don't control each other in any capacity or form. In fact, I don't even think Chris and Adrian have met Dylan and Josh outside of what we did for, uh, for uh, Tackwing, for Alliance. 
I don't, and I think they talked on the phone a couple times, but I don't think they've ever met in person, which is really crazy because I spend so much time with each team on a regular basis in, on Skype meetings or in person at dinner places, just working out the details of working together uh, and conveying the message to both parties that I don't actually have any idea. They've never met. So I, I'm definitely the link that holds it all together. Not to mention the roundtable crew, which is a totally different set of management that, you know, they kind of all know each other. So there's a lot of, like, moving pieces and what's going on. And the roundtable, sorry, the, uh, the Lynn Vander crew has decided that Six Sides is an excellent marketing conduit, even though we kind of launched it for them. It's an excellent marketing conduit and an excellent um, uh, opportunity for Lynn Vander to grow. Uh, it will when Six Sides is on its way, uh, the business back end. But right now, Six Sides doesn't pay anybody, even ourselves. Uh, so Six Sides doesn't make enough uh, at all. And it's going to take a long time for it to get that way. We do have contractual milestone, milestones in place. So we know that once we hit a certain and it's consistent milestones, like when we hit a certain consistent revenue stream through advertisements and bit donations and subs, stuff like that, when we hit certain milestones, then certain echelons kick in. Things will change. It's a good question to ask. It's a very good question. Things will change dramatically. So what that means is we've actually done the math on what it financially costs to run a game like Dungeon of the Mad Mage. We've got it all broken down. We know what the fees and costs are if we have a tech person, the rental of the space, the technology usage, everything. And that cost is what we have to hit on a regular basis to be able to pay its full value. Then you get new problems, such as, it's a problem because it's a positive problem to have, but it's a new problem. Because then we're gonna get new problems because, here's an example. Everybody who's playing on the channel right now has signed volunteer contracts and agrees that they are literally volunteering their time because they're interested in what the project is. Someone like Devin, who really wants to be a professional dungeon master, he wants to be a professional dungeon master. He, he wants to make a living off of being a DM. Totally doable. And we want to make him do this. He is definitely interested in his time on screen as a GM to do the best he can to be the best GM he can possibly be. Is this a lot of time for his sacrifice? Well, hell yes. But he's a, he's a prime example of what happens next. So as soon as we hit the next milestone, we start to stipend Devin. Same with some of the players. Here's where it gets weird. The moment Six Sides is capable to pay and stipend its talent is the moment the talent pool quadruples, right? And then we're caught into some strange paradigm of, well, everybody that got us here should get the benefits of being here. And that's one of the principles we're going to hold by, which is weird because it'll actually, it will actually stifle the channel. It'll slow the channel's progression down by not pushing to the next level. So, for example, let's say for the sake of argument, the strands of destiny um, reach a certain echelon financially. And it makes sense. So we got myself, the Hivark, uh, Foley and Beard and Peanut. So myself and, 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 and uh, Foley, we're part of Six Sides. So we don't need to claim a check from this. We don't need to stipend ourselves. Eventually we will, but we're the last people to try and claim a stipend because we need this business to grow. We want this thing to work. So if we start taking money from it, it doesn't, oh, hey, Mamba. If we start taking money from it, it doesn't, it, it starts to stifle the game. We want to dump it all into technology and into bills and whatever. So, but Peanut and Hivark are two characters that deserve a stipend when we get to that point. But if we, could, if we could pay that stipend, we might be able to reach out, we might be able to get a celebrity in place of Peanut or Hivark, which will draw hundreds, if not thousands of more eyes to the project. From a business perspective, it would make sense to put those people on. From a loyalty perspective, it makes sense to keep Peanut and Hivark 
and put some of the resources toward them to keep the game going. But the game keeps going, right? So, so it makes sense that we keep the game going, the viewership comes back, the revenue model stays the same, and it is a slow organic growth, or you nitro it by putting in like Vince Casso or, or, or you get some other B-level celebrity or like someone from Buffy comes in and plays for a few games, and it just explodes. So my thing is, when we get to that stage, what I'd like to do is either expand into new content, and the new content is, you know, built around some of the uh, can't pay in peanuts. It's, well, you can, but you know, you can only eat so many peanuts before you get sick. My my personal goal is all the people that have helped build the channel here in terms of like the player base and stuff like that. Uh, I believe they should. Um, I, nobody could replace the hardware. I believe that they should be adequately thanked. If they continue to go forward, they should be adequately thanked. If there's room for so, and, and here's the thing: as soon as you open up any sort of stipending, and I say that the the pool quadruples, I actually mean it like ten times probably, because you're going to start getting people who are professional actors, people with actual clout, some influences and stuff that want to be part of the channel, because even if they're lesser on the influence train than we are, or on par. You want these people to start to combine. We're already starting to see that a little bit. We're starting to get questions and people asking about programming. People are asking about being on the show. It changes. It's, <laughs> it's right. Well, Ravendwell, this is a good example. You know, Ravendwell, uh, if you don't know this or not, he is Kyle from the Deadliest Dungeon. By the way, Kyle, uh, you didn't hear the explanation of what happens with subscriptions now. You'll love it. If you gift a sub or subscribe to the channel, you get to put a D8 in either the GM's pool or the player's pool, and it goes in a cup, and those physical dice are for you to grab and use on, on augmenting damage or healing. Enough said. Um, I, 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 do, I do pay in donuts. Well, that's one thing we do. So we do try to make the quality of life better for the players. For example, uh, Adrian, uh, Adrian gets lunch every day, so we either have shawarma or barbecue or actual tangible meal. And all the, all the players that are involved in the day can eat. I always bring donuts and coffee. It's unlimited for them. I have beer there if they want beer. We have water there. We have chips. We have snacks. We offer dice. If we have some giveaways, we give them away. Like the board game guys, we give them a couple copies of the board games. We do everything we can at the lowest possible way to, to not destroy the channel to be able to... To, uh, to be able to support. I know, and we didn't think about it until last night, until the other night, and we decided that the channel thing is perfect. Oh, you were there, Ravendwell. So yeah, so we had a sub today. So B uh, uh, gifted a sub to, um, I'm gonna scroll down here, hold on. There we go. Uh, B gifted a sub to Dosa Damien, and she decided that she wanted to put a D6 in, uh, why is this? There we go. And she decided to, put, to give a D6 to uh, Shadowrun. So the players, the runners, have a D6 in their pool. Uh, it's D6s in Shadowrun. It's D8s in, uh, in d and don't know if you already mentioned this, but not everybody has to be paid the same stipend as long as you apply the rules fairly. I mean, uh, a guy who owns a film company, uh, a board game development studio, um, and a caf series of cafes, I'm all aware of tiered, pay pay tiered payment. <laughs> Managers get paid more than this, and owners, owners don't get paid until whatever, and, and salaried employees do this. I totally understand it. The point is, is that there are certain things in a queue, and not investment. Investment comes at the very end. Anybody who's So anything that any of our team has put in financially to this project, we kiss it goodbye, and we'll see it on the dividend. But there are active bills. There are active bills that need to be paid. So for example, we're lucky because currently the, the place that we're staying is, is kind of going rent-free, a.k.a. I own the building. That's my investment down the road, right? Things like that. Um, <laughs> I already told them about your, your uh, parks. and I actually talked about you earlier, Darren, about you fixing the, the water breakage in, out in the irrigation break. Um, when they were asking about uh, Darian Coldstone subscribing to put the uh, dice into the DMs pool. Um, the key component here is, is that there are certain things like the basic metabolic rate of sustaining the business needs to be maintained first. What that means is, 
the basic metabolic rate is what? Generally, it will be, will be, you know, uh, internet, rent. Well, internet's first. We got to make sure we pay for the internet because without the internet, without a, a good supply of internet, you don't get a show. Um, programming, programs and stuff that we've purchased and paid for, royalties and rights and things that we're shelling out to do things that we're doing, those things need to be maintained and updated. Uh, rent, when it's solely applicable, there is going to be a bill to maintain where the studio is. Regardless of whether the studio is at the round table, at the Albion, in some garage, at round table kitchen, or wherever we build the studio, there's still, it's still a space that's going to require bills. And there are a plethora of tiny little things that are necessary to survive. Those bills have to be met before we can even think of stipending. And then, of course, it's not a matter of, oh, my God, we just did a $500 day. Therefore, we want to, we just did a $500 day. Therefore, we can pay everybody. No, no. It needs to be, we need to see, like, like three months that we're hitting these targeted goals financially. And once we do that, we can go, oh, okay. This is here. This is a very true, true talk, right? Um, then we'll be able to go, okay, now we're hitting the mark. So now we can start to consider what stipends look like. And then you're right. Then we can start with the GMs. Someone tried to open the door. Can you, can you, uh, can you please get the door and tell them I'm on a call? Uh, someone, so, so now... Um, Um, we can start figuring out where to start the stipends next. And then, and then we can go, okay, the first thing that's really important on this is, is it, do we need to hire other tech so that Adrian and I can take a goddamn break? Or do we then you know, start paying the GMs because they're the ones that are putting in the most work outside of you know, the Six Sides crew? Do we hire a social media person? And then you know, there's a lot of things that start to kind of click into place and then we just fill it up. And the faster the channel grows so long as the speed of the channel matches the, um, uh, the, the revenue that's coming in, we can start to grow that family out. I mean, Lynn Vander Studios was almost the same way because Lynn Vander Studios started off, but Lynn Vander did it backwards. Lynn Vander started off with like two or three of us, me, and then a couple friends, and then we became like a, a, a group, and then that group expanded into like seven people way too quickly for its revenue stream. The revenue didn't come in consistently enough. We made a lot of financial mistakes, as you know, back in the legacy days, where like Albin's legacy and Gaskin's legacy, a lot of oopsies, lost a lot of money. Then we had like the space goat issue with Terminator, losing money there, and and then things didn't work out. And so then we had to like diminish the team down to like a core. And that core was me and Merch and Josh for the longest times. But then even Merch started to burn out because the work was too high for the payout. It was an inconsistent payout, slash tiered payout, which Scoot Ferry has um, yeah, understands. And so, you know, then we start to build it up again. Then we attract Dylan. Then we attract, you know, and as we start getting more of these people, not everybody's equal. But yeah, it definitely gets close to what we need to do. This is, this is a big true talk. I wish we, I wish we had these kind of topics at the very beginning because this is when it's just super like level stuff. But this is the business stuff. This is what keeps me up at night. I'm constantly thinking in my head, I'm playing Tetris with like, with things like, Dreams, aspirations, bills, debts, finances, lack of, thereof, resources. Like, I'm literally like, dung, 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 it's when I'm like blown backwards on something like, oh, hello, Red Eye, welcome. Uh, hello, Spec. Darren's here. Scoot Fairy, Mamba. Good crowd showed up suddenly. Always at the end of the thing, but I'll stick around for a while. Uh, so then at the end of this, like, well, so when something happens, like TK drops 18 subs out of nowhere, and that's profound. It's an outlier because we're like, ooh, we can't really count that as our growth curve. We count it as an outlying spike that comes up that kind of pushes us to the next echelon. But as long as in the next month, somehow with the amount of crowd that's still around, we can show that the curve is going this way, then we can hit our six month, 10 month, 12 month goals. That's why I say phase one for Six Sides was six months. It was proof of concept. October, November, December, January, February, March, 
April. So October to May at this point was our six month endeavor to show that we could make a channel that is quality enough to attract enough of a crowd to make it work. Our milestones were a thousand followers, X subscriptions, programming that's sticky, and technology that reaches a level that we're happy with. And a fan base, a patron base that returns that we get to know. Well, we hit all those. Lynn Vander immediately solved the patronage because you guys all jumped in and made it work out. The financials showed that we are slowly growing our curve regardless of the outliers. Um, we, I believe the technology and the look is getting better and better as we go because we, we, we strengthen it with new technology and new reinvestment of our own dime and time. Um, you know, we, so we're hitting our milestones. So now phase two for us, which is right now, and for the next four to six months, is all about expansion of the footprint. We've got it all mapped out. We know what the end game is. We know what we have. Adrian and Chris know what they have to make, what this channel has to make for them to quit their jobs. We know what we have to make to be able to hire our GMs, like to make, to make Devin's dream come true of being a professional GM is possible on six sides, maybe phase three or four, but it's possible. And he works his ass off and gives so much to this team to make it work because it's his dream and aspiration. You damn well bet the first moment we have any inkling of excess cash that we're giving it to this guy. Guaranteed for all that incredible work he's done. And every GM that works their ass off to bring it. Kyle puts in hours of work for Deadliest Dungeon. He doesn't just show up. He builds all those maps and gets all those assets. He, he spends a lot of his personal time building it. So it only makes sense to try and get him to a, to a level of stipend that makes sense. And we get there. Um, am I an influencer? Uh, I am not even an influencer. I'm considered an influencer, but you have to, according to like the, the media standards, you have to have a certain like level of influence to be called an influencer. You're like me, B. We're like baby fluencers <laughs> or baby influencers, aspirational influencers. You are a supporting influencer. I am a aspiring influencer. But you're part of the team. So we as a team are kind of an influencer because as this party grows and as our channel expands and as the fanship explodes, we, you guys, in some cases, you are our influencer. Yes. So you influence how we should indicate things. If B says, I want this to happen and is dumping subs and bits, well, we're going to listen. You know, if B is there communicating and welcoming the fan bases, then you're damn right you're part of the fam. Like, you're damn right you work your ass off. And it's worth it, right? Um, yeah, you're a great influencer. Does that make sense? But, in, you know, I, I, I'm, I can't even call myself an, an influencer because there's this actual weird standard behind what an influencer is. Uh, so, you know what's really weird? Every single time my staff leave this room, the phone rings. Every time. Two staff, they're both out having a conversation on the patio. And the phone's ringing, and I can't go answer it. Son of a gun. Every time. Like, they've been here this entire time, there's been no phone ringing. As soon as they walk out, the phone rings. It's like some strange psychic phenomenon. It's nuts. Yeah. So that was a really great question, which brought in a... A uh, really interesting situation on hand, um, and I'm 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 glad we had the chance to chat and talk it over. Um, yeah, that's the way to go. Let me make fun of them. They're about to come in. I just like to point out that twice in the last hour, you guys have been here. And it's been fine. The moment you both leave together, the phone rings. Really? Yep. You missed the two calls now. You yeah. should go call them back. Yeah. Uh, it's on it's on screen. They're all laughing because it's like it's like I, I'm, I'm freaking out because I'm like I'm not gonna go answer it. But they're standing there. I'm like God damn it! It's just.
Internet fox blocks me. We're back. The internet fox blocks me. <laughs> so darn foxes, as I was saying was, I was fox blocked. But at that note, I think we're at the end of the stream. Uh, I just managed to connect to a Wi-Fi because even the hard wire died. Um, nothing we can do about that. But that was probably uh, the world trying to say, I think it's time for you to go. It's not on your end. It's totally on my end. It's probably gonna. It's probably gonna kick out soon again. I'm on some. Yeah, it's gonna kick out soon again for sure. Uh, as you can see, the video capture device doesn't work. Uh, give me a second to change the camera over. Try and fix it. That was really annoying. Okay, uh, if I have time, I just wanted to ask. I thought I remember you mentioning a while ago if there was a roundtable location here in Washington. Is that correct? No, there was going to be a roundtable uh, in Washington. It hasn't. Uh, it, it was stifled by COVID. If it comes back, uh, that'd be great. I don't think it will. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching the show. Next week for 103, we'll have that conversation and again, make it work. And uh, it's okay if you ask the question. It's not a, not a big deal. Um, I look forward to – oh, my camera's gone again. But, anyway, we'll call it a day. Goodbye.